Our regular program will not be seen, so we may bring you this News 3 documentary presentation. The first thing we saw was the Today Show, and we saw one of the towers burning on fire. Okay, we're holding them. We got them. It was a bit of a blur once I understood that we were under attack and America was at war. <laughs> I heard someone on the TV say, oh my God, another a second plane just hit. A lot of stuff on the wire you just couldn't believe. And many of the emergency workers basically just happy to be alive. 300 firefighters are missing. We had nine up top. <laughs> This just keeps getting worse and worse. Get out of the area, the second tower is coming down. They tell you the second tower is coming Yes, it's about to come out. New York City got hit, Washington DC got hit, uh, Pennsylvania got hit. Oh my God. Who's next? Anybody next? What are the targets? Waiting for the president to come on the radio and say something. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. Earth. And freedom will be defended. and thanks for joining us as we do our small part to honor the promise we made in the days following the attacks of 9-11. We will never forget. It's etched in granite here at Firefighters Memorial Park in Las Vegas. Your thoughts on this solemn anniversary no doubt take you back to where you were, what you were doing when you first heard the news and turned on the TV to see the images that were instantly seared into our collective memory. It's been said that journalists get to write the first draft of history. And on this day of remembrance, the reporters and photographers who were at News 3 on 9-11 wanted to share some of their memories with you. Things you didn't see on TV, what they were thinking, what they were feeling as they were writing that first draft of history. We each had our own unique reaction, and that is certainly true of mine. See, I had just been up in the World Trade Center days before the attacks, up on the 107th floor of the North Tower. And I'll never forget looking out those windows and seeing the other buildings so far below. It felt so high up. So on the morning of the 11th, my first reaction was I need to get back there. But remember, there were no airplanes flying. So I grabbed a photographer, jumped in a car, and drove two days straight back to New York while my colleagues in Las Vegas covered the impact here in the valley. I was able to get closer than a reporter would be able to get with a camera. I have a good friend here in New York and he knew some of the people at the various checkpoints along the way and we were able to go right up to ground zero as you say and what it did was it took something that's been a two-dimensional image for me and a lot of people watching it on television or even from as far back as we are here and it made it three-dimensional it was happening all around us i remember i walked in and to find out that our morning news had been preempted because there had been an explosion in the first tower a plane had hit the first tower we just looked at each other and we uh, chills were sent up and down our spine we said oh we're at war in essence and oh we knew God. that this was not an accident. I remember my initial reaction was uh, almost one of disbelief. It was hard to believe that this was actually happening. I had to drop off my daughter at preschool at the time. She was four years old. Listening to everything going on on the radio, she's in the back seat just singing along. And I'm looking in the rearview mirror thinking, what just happened? And my husband also had to go to work, police officer, wondering what's going to happen to him that day what's gonna happen in Las Vegas. So that was really hard. It was a little scary. I don't know that I've ever seen my colleagues look just like that. Uh, and it was hugely unsettling. We were all waiting, like most of America, for the next attack. Meanwhile, people were still just, like everyone else in the nation and around the world, were just looking up at the monitors, watching what was happening in between going back and forth. We are not shutting down government offices. We're not shutting down law enforcement or restricting access. There were security concerns. The airport was shut down. Planes that were headed somewhere else were forced to land at McCarran, where the people on board learned the day's horrifying news. Didn't really know a lot of details. You could hear the snickering and everything going on in the plane, you know, because what an inconvenience. And then when we landed, I called home and then found out how serious it was. I'm a lawyer and the World Trade Center is full of people I've worked with. I was in the plane with the lady that was on her way back to New York, actually, after it left St. Louis, and she found out her daughter-in-law was in the World Trade Center. Every rental car was taken. 
leaving many visitors stranded in Las Vegas. I get a call from the desk. They say pack your bags for a couple days and go to LAX because I believe that's where I think two of the four planes were headed. And so our instruction was to go and see uh, who we could talk to, family members, friends, who were going to meet the, um, the passengers on the planes. Oh, it's hard to speak about this, and it's a very tough time, and uh, I think we just have to all hold together, and uh, we'll be fine. I think everything else is too early to speak about. Police and, and all of the first responders were working overtime. Activity on the Strip? really came to a standstill and, and that happened almost immediately. We ended up getting assigned uh, Rich Giacovino and I to Hoover Dam. I couldn't really concentrate on my assignment uh, because I didn't have a uh, full understanding of what the situation was. I remember Rich had, I believe it was his brother-in-law, was a firefighter out on Long Island and Rich didn't know if his brother-in-law had been sent in to where to, to one of the World Trade Centers. During my assignment I'm making phone calls in between interviews uh, or shooting some B-roll. They sent me to Nellis. Nellis has been called the jewel of the Air Force. They don't want to be the next target of terrorists. I'd been to Nellis before. And so when I went on September 11th, it was locked down. They had barriers up that I had never seen before. Is that any reason to believe that you may be a target? Well, we always, uh, always have to presume day to day and, and certainly two day that uh, we might be a target. Periodically, we were looking in the skies above Las Vegas to see if there was a plane coming our direction or a jet coming our direction or even a missile coming our direction. I, I mean, it was bizarre. That's, that's just kind of the atmosphere of that day. Gas did rise. There was concern that it would keep rising, and so people went on these gas runs, and people were lining up, uh, waiting to fill up their tank, and, and they had extra tanks they were filling up because they didn't know if gas was going to shoot up or if it was literally going to run out. Uh, tensions were high. People were arguing as they were waiting in line. Huh? What's up? What? What, you gonna What's start up? some shit with me? I think it's ridiculous that they're getting so upset because there's a line waiting for gas when all these other people are having a much more chaotic situation with these buildings being blown up. What actions we as citizens today can take are limited. However, if you wish to help, I encourage you to donate blood in order to help our fellow citizens in need throughout the country. People were lining up uh, literally for blocks uh, wanting to donate, mainly because they felt there wasn't anything else they could do. They clearly weren't prepared for this and they at one point were even turning people away because they couldn't take all the people who wanted to donate. You know, I thought coming here to New York might help me, uh, it might make it a little easier for me to get a grip on this story and to begin to accept it, but I, I find that every time I start to get some level of that, another wave of just disbelief sets in where you think, what we all saw happen live on Tuesday didn't really happen, did it? And then you have that sinking feeling where you realize, yes, it did. We found out that we lost a local teacher, Barbara Edwards. She was a teacher at Palo Verde High School. She taught German and French, and she everyone loved her. She was one of those teachers where all of the other teachers wanted to hang with her in the teacher's lounge. The students loved her. Ten years ago, it's, it's stunning to really think about because I remember showing up at Barbara Edwards' condo like it was yesterday. At her home here in Las Vegas, the headline of her death right on her doorstep, up above the welcome home sign she'll never see. I think that there is a strong connection to the events at that campus, as there should be and there always will be. There's memorials there. You don't even, sad to say, have to look farther than Palo Verde High School to know that tragedy did hit us too, very, very personally. These walls are the photo album of an American tragedy. You hear that number, over 4,000 people still missing, and it's so big, it's hard to get your mind around it. For such a vibrant city, I've just never seen it so still. That's what really struck me. Again, people were here, but they just were quiet. Memorials like this one are part of a grieving process for our country, a process that started 10 years ago this morning when those first images appeared on television. Some memorials are big and organized, others just sprung up on their own. Call this spontaneous compassion. There was no official announcement of this vigil, no posters telling people to come here. They just started showing up. 
first in groups of two or three, then by the dozens, then the hundreds and the thousands. Everyone did come together and there was a united purpose. Um, we knew that we had to strengthen our security. We knew that uh, we had to be there for our loved ones on the East Coast. Everybody, uh, I think, started to come together. Uh, we had a couple of uh, vigils in town. My prayers just go out to everybody. I feel so bad for what went on. It's wonderful that everybody is here and showing their support and God bless America. In New York's known for setting fashion trends and this week the trend is all about the red, white and blue. You know they have these great deals on the streets here from watches to purses. Today I picked this up for five bucks and you can get them all over town. Everybody decked out. For a few days people were really nice to each other. <laughs> it was like we were all in this together. It'd be nice if we did it all the time, you know, or more often instead of just when there's catastrophes and things like that. From the smallest flag to the absolute largest, Las Vegans are coming together during this time of national crisis. The Harito family put this flag up in their backyard right along Buffalo just hours after the World Trade Center was destroyed. I've had phone calls and I've had people come by and just drop off cards and say, this has touched us. and. Thank you for doing that. We went up to Times Square earlier tonight. You pay a lot of money to advertise on those signs in Times Square, but tonight they are not advertising products. They are advertising patriotism, just another symbol that uh, we've been hit hard as a country, but we're coming together and united. Uh, we'll get through this and we'll rebuild. This is a very vibrant city. There's people up at all hours of the night. I wouldn't say it was a ghost town. People were still out. But it was it seemed like it was about a tenth of the normal people that were out. We would go to a bar or restaurant. We'd be the only people in there. People weren't going out. People weren't coming to this town. Just a month before 9-11, uh, me and my children went to New York City. And for the first time ever, we did the New York City tourist thing. We went to Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty. And we had to explain to my children what happened. Um, it was kind of hard, uh, and they uh, had a hard time understanding that. Flowers drawn in chalk on the sidewalk. In happier times, the very symbol of a child's innocence. But today, it means so much more. As long as the candles burn, the hope is still alive that by some miracle, some of the missing, the mothers, fathers, daughters, and sons on these posters will be found alive. Some are pictured with their children. Others with a twinkle in their eyes that reminds you of someone you know. New Yorkers come here to spend quiet moments studying the pictures one by one. I don't think I'll ever be able to look at a candle the same way again after all this, and I don't like that. And I know I'll never be able to go up in a skyscraper again without thinking about all this, and I don't like that either. I was just up at the top of the World Trade Center, as I've said, several days before it collapsed. I know I won't be able to fly again without thinking about all this, and I don't like that. I don't like any of it. And then I wonder how we can go on from here with all that's changed. Las Vegas looked like an easy target, we would think. People, it's a high profile target, maybe. We kept hearing about that in the days that followed. Every day that followed the attacks brought a new revelation about the sheer size of the tragedy, the life stories of the victims, the new threats to our safety. And we learned who was to blame and how much time those cold-blooded killers had spent here in Las Vegas walking among us. There's a hole in the middle of it where those two towers should be just behind me. Um, for anyone familiar with the New York skyline, it's as obvious as two missing front teeth. It just doesn't look the way it should. Las Vegas, though, was, was very surreal because for several days there, weren't, there wasn't an airplane flying in the skies. I remember that week they were talking about potential targets in the United States and they singled out Las Vegas and specifically Lake Mead. They had a checkpoint set up miles away from the dam and they were checking people and cars um, to make sure that you had a reason to be going across the dam because remember at that time that was the only way to get across the dam was on that road right over the top of the dam. I have a feeling that post 9-11 our city just isn't as footloose and fancy free as it used to be. Everything changed especially when we now know that the terrorists were here plotting September 11th in our city. Strip sandwich shop right there on Las Vegas Boulevard at Bonneville. We found out that six of them had, had eaten there. I wonder what was his plans 
you know, and what was he doing in Las Vegas? Motel records show Anna spent the last weekend in June here. We could assume back then that they were looking at Las Vegas as a possible target. That was certainly what law enforcement was putting out. And it is scary for me and also all the Las Vegans that's here to know that such a criminal has came through here and passed by and gone and done his mischief and, you know, and left others to follow because you don't know. That makes you think, what is going on in Las Vegas? Is something happening here that we don't know about? There was a sense of panic, um, and I think there, there was a national sense of panic. People didn't know was there going to be another attack? You know, was Las Vegas on that list? Could we be another target for terrorism? How we deal with the aftermath of this situation will define the character of our nation. Well, I am constantly and profoundly impressed with the strength and resilience of, this, of the people who live in this city that we've seen this week. As many of the people who work on Wall Street headed off to work today, they grab their briefcase and their jacket, and then one of these, a breathing mask, because it is very difficult to breathe down there with all that smoke without it. This is the firefighter's prayer. It talks about strength, and as we mourned, our leaders told us we had to be strong to move on that if we stopped living our lives, the terrorists had won. So we struggled to get a damaged nation and a fractured economy moving again. What was it like in there today? Well, it was um, much more calmer than I expected. We did pretty well. We well, did pretty good. Were you nervous going back, coming back? To the As a human being, yes. But then it's like, then I made the determination. I have to go back to it. I'm not going to go into hiding, and that's it. Was there that feeling of pride in there today? Yes, it is. And when the firefighters came in and the rescue workers all hell broke loose, we were clapping like hell. We were ready to lift them up on our backs. Terrorist acts like this can potentially change our behavior. If we allow that, then our enemy achieve partial success. We will not stand for that. The freedoms that we enjoy under our democracy must be free and everlasting. Anything less than that is also unacceptable. I was on the strip interviewing tourists who were stuck here. We were right between the Jockey Club and Bellagio, right there, I can remember exactly where we were standing. And all of a sudden, someone was like, look. And everyone on the strip in this little area turned around and we saw the first plane taking off from McCarran. And, um, Sorry, <laughs> but I'll never forget that. Visitors started returning. Las Vegas and the rest of the nation began the long road to economic recovery. The sites of the attacks faced an even longer physical recovery. The firefighters who are still here spend part of their brief break from the front lines taking it all in. But there's not much time for that. There's more work to be done. The equipment covered in dust from the collapsed buildings needs to be cleaned so it can be used again right away. All the while, their fallen comrades watch over them, the smiles on their faces offering some small measure of comfort. It's the look of a life well lived, men who died doing a job they loved. I can't believe it's been 10 years. You know, some of those images you can still see people running down the streets of New York that doesn't seem like that was 10 years ago at all. 9-11 changed our nation, our world forever. There are some changes you can see and other changes you experience. But September 11th has changed America forever and along with that, Las Vegas. We used to do whatever we wanted in an airport and you just don't do that now. You don't even mess around with security anywhere you go. I think people realize um, anything can happen. We didn't think it could happen here, it did. We couldn't fly for three months. They actually grounded all media helicopters for three months. We've gotten used to it, I think over the last decade. So uh, initially those changes were stark. Today, they're just part of life. You might not be able to go into a building like you used to without second thought. But as we all know, there were new security measures that went into place, including uh, stopping all uh, big rig traffic over Hoover Dam. The last day that a big rig went over Hoover Dam was 9-11 until the bypass bridge opened up this uh, last fall. They developed what is known now as the Fusion Center. It's, it's our own Homeland Security Office. Uh, it houses federal uh, 
investigators, federal officers, FBI, as well as Metro and, and local police agencies. And, and I think that really did um, help to strengthen our local resources. Nobody wants to forget, nobody will forget, and they'll always remember. It is true that we will never forget what happened on 9-11 or the 2,977 people we lost that day. But as we close this morning, I challenge you to ask yourself, have we forgotten some of the lessons we learned in the aftermath? The tight bond we felt as Americans despite our differences? The importance of making sure the people you love know that every day? And that may be the highest purpose this anniversary can serve and the best way to honor the victims. If we renew our focus on the meaningful things that unite us instead of the petty arguments that divide us. Something to think about as we leave you to reflect on this day of remembrance. From all of us at News 3, take care. Mm -hmm.